Every Man an Enemy by W. Howard Baker. Chapter 12. Even before the sound of the scream had died away, Blake was on his feet, running. It had been a woman screaming, a woman in fear. A woman out in the garden surrounding the house, out in the deepening darkness of this short December day. And as he ran, a name leapt into Blake's mind, unbidden. Carla. He skidded out into the hall, moving fast. John Bovis was there before him, barging through the door into the servants' quarters, racing for the other door which led out into the garden. Blake followed him, and then, as the terrible, terrified scream was repeated, he passed him. He dived across lawn and flower beds crisp with thin snow. He thrust a dark evergreen aside and charged on. He came to the coach house, now a garage. A woman stood there by the disused well. She was one of John Bovis's housemaids. Blake recognised her. Her face was registering extreme shock. Her eyes stared. Her mouth was slack, gaping. She was going to scream again at any moment. At her feet there was a basket, to the handle of which a long, thin line was attached. In the basket there were six bottles, all broken, jagged necks upward. And in the middle of the bottles, nestling like a new-laid egg in a dark, glassy nest, there was a blood-stained ragged human ear. All this Sexton Blake saw, and then the woman screamed again. He whipped around on her. Open-handed, he slapped her across the face. The sound snapped like a pistol shot. The woman's fixed, hysterically shocked expression crumpled like paper. She put her face in her hands. She began to sob. Bovis arrived, panting. What's going on? For Pete's sake, what happened? He took a hold of his servant's arm, none too gently. What happened, Mary? Tinker and Kirby came up behind him. Blake spoke sharply to Bovis. Get Mary into the house. She's in no fit state to answer questions. For the moment, she's to be asked none. Make her sit down. Give her some hot, strong, sweet tea. But, Bovis began. Do it, Blake rejoined shortly, and then turned to Tinker. Everyone else should be kept away from here. Get everybody back into the house and keep them there by force if necessary. Phone for the police. Right, Governor. Tinker accepted his orders without question and began to put them into immediate effect. Come along, please, Mr. Bovis. But what is going on? There's someone down the well, Blake said. He had seen the blood which smeared the rope and the basket and which had left a jellied trail across the stones at the well's mouth. That is where this was. He touched the basket with his foot as he spoke and the broken bottles rang against each other. That was when Bovis saw the raggedly torn human ear for the first time. He sucked in a sharp breath. What? Who? I don't know who's down there, Blake said. And I don't want what Mary was doing with the basket, though I... I can guess. But I'll give you all the answers you want as soon as I'm sure of them myself. For now, you must take Mary back to the house. She's suffering from shock. Of course, I come along, Mr. Bovis, Tinker said, more firmly this time. Bovis went. Tinker's voice was raised, cutting through the excited chatter of the other guests. Back to the house, everybody, back to the house, please. But what's happened? Who was that screaming? What's going on? Blake shut the voices out of his mind. Tinker could deal with the other guests. Kirby was speaking to him. What was Mary doing with the basket, Blake? What have you guessed? I think she's simply a secret drinker. Blake said. He indicated the basket's load of broken bottles. Gin and whiskey mainly, and all, I'll wager, out of John's cellar. She took them, put them in the basket, and lowered them down the well at the end of this line. A good hiding place. Any time she fancied a nip, she could come out here and have one. All she had to do was haul the basket up. A lonely place to do your drinking, Kirby said. Sneak thieves can't be choosers. Wouldn't the rope be spotted? Wouldn't it be seen? Might someone else not haul up her basket? It will be noticed, all right, Blake said, but not seen, if you know what I mean. Ropes and wells go together. There'd be little danger of anyone else hauling up a secret hoard. And, and, and that, Kirby was pointing to the ear. I said there was someone down the well. That's part of him. Of him? Perhaps Jimmy McIntosh, Blake said grimly. That ear belongs to a man. How on earth can you tell? Just look at it, Blake said. There's hair inside it, a lot of hair. Ever seen a girl with an ear like that? 
Ugh, said Kirby. And how, how did the man get down the well? I don't know that any more than you do, Blake said. Though I intend to find out if I can. As for how that ear comes to be where it is, I'd say that whoever it is down there hit the basket full of bottles on the way down. The bottle shattered under the impact, the ragged, jagged glass would do the rest. Horrible, Kirby got out. Blake looked at him hard-eyed. Isn't it? Kirby shivered. Then he said, What do you want me to do? You've given Tinker his orders. What about me? Get me a rope. A long rope. And get me a torch, Blake said. I'm going down. See you tomorrow.